Um, I'd like to invite all of you to find, there's lots of stuff on your table again, and it will all become abundantly clear. Um, but if you would start with a sign-in sheet, somewhere there, there's a sign-in, and if you would sign and let us know that you're here. And if you are a newcomer, a special welcome to you. If you would add your contact information so we can get to know a little bit about you and who you are, that would really be helpful. And then also on your table, there are coloring sheets. So for those of you who are new, um, we believe that coloring is a spiritual practice. So that's why we provide them. It is not rude for you to color um, while I'm talking or while anyone else is talking. In fact, um, studies show that that actually helps you focus better. So color away. Uh, we are, you know, it's a stressful season, so we need to, to focus. And then I also want to let you know that today is um, a little bit different here at Journey. Um, we are going to celebrate or observe our Blue Christmas. Um, usually we do this in an evening, um, and we usually do it on the shortest day, so it usually ends up being like the 20th. Um, but as our leadership team was meeting um, and wondering where we should have Blue Christmas and when we should have Blue Christmas, um, the suggestion was made, like, let's do it on a Sunday morning because it seems... Um, you know, for the last few months, and uh, maybe even the whole year, um, a lot of you have been experiencing things in your life that are struggles, or grief, or pain, or suffering, and maybe it's a good idea for all of us to come together and to acknowledge that. Um, so Blue Christmas is our way of just acknowledging that even in the midst of all of the joy of the season, and the Christmas carols, and the parties, um, all of us carry at least something within us with which we struggle in this season. So today is a, a time when we observe that and we acknowledge it and we say it's okay um, for you to um, you know, shed a tear or two or three. Um, so feel free, That's um, we'll explain a little bit more about that um, as our worship unfolds, but I just wanted to give you an idea of you know, something different today. So Joe is gonna get us started um, by lighting our Advent candle um, and starting us off with our opening prayer.
invite you to stand as we sing together.
recognize that for many, Christmas is anything but merry. We acknowledge that the holiday season can be difficult on a personal level for those of us who are grieving the loss of a loved one, for those of us who have difficult family relationships, for those of us who struggle with addictions, physical and mental illness, depression, or stress. And because we don't live in isolation, but are indeed connected to the wider world, we also acknowledge those in our world who suffer the effects of war, poverty, and disease. And so we gather together as a community to express and acknowledge these conflicting emotions. And in the midst of all of our emotions, we recognize that it was into such a world as this that God's love took on flesh in Jesus. The story of the first Christmas is not an entirely happy story, but it is a story about life in the real world. Consider this. Mary of Nazareth, a poor peasant 12 or 13 year old girl who is engaged to a carpenter, Joseph, discovers she's pregnant. Joseph is initially reluctant to enter into the unfolding drama. He does not want to embarrass Mary, and he plans to divorce her privately. It's not an easy time for the couple. Their country was under Roman occupation, and King Herod, who ruled Palestine for the Romans, was well known for his cruelty. Remember, they are forced to travel for a government-mandated census, and instead of being welcomed by extended family members, they are forced to find accommodations elsewhere. The only space available for them is a stable where Mary gives birth surrounded by dirty animals and smelly hay. It's not a story that includes a palace. There's no nursery. There's only some dirty shepherds who are summoned there by mysterious angelic visitors who they find very frightening. Their story, in many ways, is our story. So as we enter into the spirit of Blue Christmas, I invite you to join with Joe as he uh, leads us in a responsive reading of Psalm 121. Of this season. 
with the lighting of the candles and the readings of scriptures and time of reflection and meditation and singing, we bring all of these things before God, knowing that God, God has promised to be present with us when we gather together in God's name. There will be times of meditation uh, interspersed with the readings, and during that time of meditation, we encourage you to pray for the people and situations in your own life and in our world that are in need of God's presence. Um, and later on, um, as we, as is our custom, we will be lighting candles also for those <coughs> prayer concerns. Um, and I just invite you um, also, woven into this is the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We're gonna sing the first verse now, um, just to kind of become familiar with it, and then after each of the lighting of, of the candle, we'll um, sing another verse. So I invite you to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Thank you. 
candle that symbolizes fear. We light the third candle to name our fears. Fear of uncertainty. Fear of being alone. Fear of those who are not like us, of whom we don't understand. Fears of change or fears of stagnation. All the fears that hold us back from living life to the fullest. Just as the shepherds and the wise men and King Herod and Mary and Joseph were filled with fear that first Christmas, so we too live in a world in a time that is filled with fear. So may this light bring to light all our fears. Hear these words from Isaiah. But you, Israel, my servant, you are the people that I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. I brought you from the ends of the earth. I called you from its farthest corners, and I said to you, you are my servant. I do not reject you, but I choose you. So do not be afraid. I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. I will make you strong, and I will help you. I will protect you and save you. The struggles of those who long for freedom from oppression. 
the struggles of those experiencing all that we have named already. We know that our own struggles are part of the struggles of the world, desperately in need of God's promised realm of peace. So may this candle bring to light our struggles. Hear this word from Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth disappeared, and the sea vanished. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared and ready, like a bride dressed to meet her husband. And I heard a loud voice speaking from the throne, Now God's home is with people. God will live with them, and they shall be God's people, and God will be with them, and God will be their God. God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more grief or crying or pain. The old things have disappeared. And the one who sits on the throne said, and now I make all things new. And he also said to me, write this, because these words are true and can be trusted. And he said, it is done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. To anyone who is thirsty, I will give the right to drink from the spring of the water of life without paying for it.
And so we take the flame and we light our care candles for ourselves, for those named or remembered, and in solidarity with those who cannot express their concerns for celebration. And I light this candle for all of the things that we offer up <coughs> in our hearts and our minds. I'm going to share with, a, uh, with you a reading um, from the Iona community, from a, um, a resource that I have called Wild Goose Worship Group. So I invite you to kind of use this as a prayer and a reflection. When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us. And no one knew, only the few who dared to believe that God might do something different. Will you do the same this Christmas, Lord? Will you come into the darkness of today's world, not the friendly darkness, as when sleep rescues from tiredness, but the fearful darkness in which people have stopped believing that war will end, or that food will come, or that a government will change, or that the church cares? Will you come into that darkness and do something different to save your people from death and despair? Will you come into the quietness of our towns and cities, not the friendly quietness, as when lovers hold hands, but the fearful silence, when the phone has not rung and the letter has not come, and the friendly voice no longer speaks and the doctor's face says it all? Will you come into that darkness and do something different? Not to distract, but to embrace your people. Will you come into the dark corners and the quiet places of our lives? We ask this not because we are guilt-ridden or want to be, but because the fullness of our lives longs for, and it depends upon us being as open and vulnerable to you as you were to us when you came wearing no more than diapers and trusting human hands to hold their maker. Will you come into our lives if we open them to you and do something different? When the world was dark and the sea was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us. So do the same this Christmas, Lord. Do the same this Christmas. In the midst of all that we have shared, acknowledged, and named here, God is with us. And so we light the center candle, the Christ candle, to remember that God has come in and is coming into our world. The light that is the life of all the people shines here and now among all of us. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. <laughs> Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The word was the source of life, and this light brought light to people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell about the light so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to talk about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all people. In response to the goodness of that light, we have opportunity now to share our gratitude in our offering. I'm going to pass around the offering basket. And once again, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we want you to be our guest and be under no pressure or obligation to give. This is really for those who have made a commitment to our church and to the ministry that we do. And a reminder for those of you who are members, if you have not yet returned a pledge card for 2017, um, we need you to do that by December 1st because that's when we start working on our budget and remember the way we do budgeting. If we don't get a pledge from you, it doesn't get included in our budget, which means budget cuts. And that's never happy. So um, I also, as we pass this around, I um, invite you to make use of the um, feathers that are on your table. So this is a theme that we're going to follow through um, 
Through Advent and into the Christmas season, on our Dreamcatcher, we'll be adding feathers that represent different things. So um, today we put blue feathers on because it's blue Christmas. And so on the little piece of paper, we invite you to put something um, that you thought of today, that you meditated on, you reflected on. Um, and there's a couple different options for you. You can take it home with you if you want to be reminded of that, or you can grab another feather and take that home with you. Um, we invite you to come and tie it on to um, the dream catcher if you want. If that the idea of that makes you nervous, <laughs> then just put this, put it in the basket, and we will tie it on for you. And then each week we'll be adding our prayers and our hopes and our joys as we make our way through the Advent season. Mm.
Thank <laughs> you. 